Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I appreciate you being here today, Secretary Buttigieg. It's good to see you again, and I'm always going to call you mayor just because that's how I uh, that's how I know you. Um, I appreciate you coming to the DFW airport, um, and I'm glad that you were able to meet with my uh, my colleague um, from Texas. Mm -hmm. DFW airport is smack dab in the middle of my district. I'm a former board member, so next time you come in town, mm -hmm. more than 24 hours notice would really be appreciated, so that I can make sure that I'm actually I'm actually there. Um, interesting comment about the EVs earlier from my colleague from New Jersey. The, the, the quote was made that as more people uh, buy EVs, the price of gas goes down. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but we've got more people driving EVs now than we ever have in our history, and I haven't seen anything but gas prices go up. Part of the concern is that we, as we continue to see the incentives for EVs, uh, they seem to be getting a free ride on our highways, even though because of their, their weight, uh, considerable weight um, over gas guzzling, to use that quote, uh, uh, um, other vehicles, that they're no doubt causing more damage to the roads. So are you concerned that the weight of the EVs and their lack of paying for the roads that they're driving on? I mean, my chief concern is, okay, if, mm -hmm. if less people are paying gas taxes because we're giving that pass to EVs, they're causing more of the damage. We're not going to have the maintenance on that. So I think there, there's two sides of the coin to think about. Uh, on one hand, as, 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 you, uh, as you point out, uh, EVs don't pay, uh, if it's a, a full, fully electric vehicle, you're not paying the gas tax, which is traditionally how we've uh, funded the Highway Trust Fund. On the other hand, uh, we know that uh, ultimately there will be less expense to Medicaid, for example, for fewer children uh, suffering from asthma that's a consequence of living near areas that have a lot of traffic with uh, traditional combustion vehicles. Uh, we know that uh, there are very real dollars and cents costs to allowing climate change to continue to accelerate. So I, I'm so concerned right now. Yeah, I'm two. concerned right now on paying for our infrastructure bill, this massive mm -hmm. infrastructure bill that we just passed. Mm -hmm. and you just took away the pay for if everybody, if you're incentivizing them to pay to drive EVs. We have no pay now, and they're causing considerable amount of damage on the on the roads. Right, so a couple things here. One, as you know, the, the IAJA uh, sought to use not increased user fees, but uh, other sources of funding in order to uh, make those investments possible. But two, uh, the, you know, this legislation, following in line with previous transportation bills, created pilots for states to look at alternatives for how they want to fund uh, uh, their roads for those that rely on gas taxes, as many states do. And we recognize different states are going to come up with different approaches here. We think we'll learn a lot from them. Uh, I think it's relatively early in that process, but we're interested to see the Yeah, the problem with it being early in the process is we've already passed the bill. We just don't have any way of paying for it. So while we can set up these test projects in other states, the fact is, is that we're already going to have that debt and we've got no pay for for it. Well, it's not that we have no pay for for it. It's just that we don't have the tradi we don't We will have less revenue from electric vehicles into the particular pay for that has been favored by Congress in the past. It. So we're going to have to find it somewhere else in the budget. Right. So typically it's been general fund, and, and that's one yeah. way to do it, but far from the only way. Yeah. Um, you know, in many instances, you are empowered and directed by Congress to ensure that federal laws protect transportation workers, passengers, and the movement of goods. Consistent federal standards help to protect interstate commerce and prevent a state or circuit court from making decisions that would impact the entire country or from creating conflicting standards around the country, which would make compliance confusing, impossible, or unnecessarily costly. Are you concerned about the challenges to the department's federal authority that would create a patchwork of state regulations? And specifically, I'm talking about um, what's happening in California. Hmm. So there's always a balance that, that we know it has to be struck uh, principally between Congress and the courts. On uh, and the states on what ought to be a federal power and what ought to be a state power. Uh, we think that often things seem to go best when the uh, federal standard amounts to a floor, not a ceiling. And then some states uh, who want to make sure that there's even more done for the well-being of their workers or for health or whatever the particular thing is that they regulate. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, my, my, my time is rapidly going down, but do you know how many DOT registered motor carriers have only one truck? Uh, no, I don't. So it's about 300,000. Mm. So as we continue to see crisis after crisis with our supply chain, what would happen to our supply chain, the country, and these small business owners if the U.S. were to ban their ability to work as independent contractors for large motor carriers? We certainly need to find a way for them to be able to work effectively, uh, if not in traditional uh, models, then, then in new ones. But again, that's uh, something that's being resolved between the courts and the state right now. We're not a party to that, uh, that litigation. So you don't think that the DOT has any, any um, play in what's happening to basically cut our supply chain countrywide? 
Well, of course, we have a lot of plan what's happening to our supply chain. But you're, you're That's why I work on it all the time. We're just not part of the litigation. No, but are you planning on getting involved at all, or are you just waiting for the courts to decide? Oh, we're working on dozens of things related to truck driver availability, but in this particular regard, we're not a party to the litigation. Okay. 